Hi everybody, Lance Moore, and today I'm going to go over in video number two one of the most important parts when buying a home, and a lot of people just don't understand this. And this is the difference between a quality builder and a quantity builder. And I'm going to talk about some tips so you understand the difference. All too often when people buy a new home, they're looking at the wrong things. Now I know location and subdivision is really important, but you really need to understand what you're getting. It's like if I were to talk about the automobile industry. If I said Kia, Toyota, and Mercedes-Benz, you would know the difference. But I don't want you to think you're getting a Toyota and you're really getting a Kia, or think you're getting a Mercedes-Benz and you're getting a Toyota. And that's a problem with new homes because it's really hard to understand that. So I'm not gonna be talking about the cosmetic stuff, stuff like the countertops and the cabinets and the flooring. We're gonna go a little deeper. I'm gonna talk about identifying and finding out what's underneath the drywall how they actually construct the home, what the energy efficiency is like, so you really have a good idea of what type of builder you're building with. Now, I'm not saying a quality builder, like a custom home builder, can't build a piece of junk. Matter of fact, a lot of them do. And I'm not saying a quantity builder can't build a really, really good home. Some of them build great homes. So let's go over and I'm going to give you an idea of um, an actual subdivision and sort of break it down. Now there's a subdivision where I live and it has three builders in it. It has Centex, it has Taylor Morrison, and it has Cardell. Three completely different builders and three completely different grades of builders. So let's start off with the Syntex home. Syntex homes is basically what I would consider a grade one. It's an entry level home. They're giving you more square footage because they're just not putting the detail that some of the other builders are putting in inside the home and outside the home. So here's a breakdown. The Syntex home comes on a 50 foot lot. When you drive up and you look at the home, you're going to see the roof pitch. It, it's not very steep. It's going to be very flat, sort of. You're not going to see real high steep pitches. You're not going to see a lot of architectural detail and, and a lot of stuff on the outside. When you walk into the home, you're going to see lower ceilings, maybe nine foot four ceilings, or some people call them 10 foot ceilings. You're going to see lower end 36 inch cabinetry, uh, cheaper countertops, cheaper flooring. Um, everything's just going to be very cookie cutter. They're more of a volume builder. And they're basically, everything they do is just a code. They don't really give you a lot past the code, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, now we step up to Taylor Morrison. Taylor Morrison, they're what I would call a grade two builder. They're a step up. So Taylor Morrison is building or they have built on 60 foot wide lots, so they're a little larger. When you look at the home from the outside, you're gonna see the roof pitch isn't so flat, it's a little bit steeper, so it allows inside the ceilings to be a little higher. And when you're looking in the outside of the home, you're gonna see more detail to the home. When you, when you walk through the inside, you're gonna notice that the ceilings are a little higher. They went from about a 9.4 to a 10.4 ceiling. They're gonna give you a little bit better cabinetry, a little bit better countertop, and they're gonna give you a little bit past what I would call the specs, the base specs that's required from the builders. Now, when you get into a Cardell, the Cardells are what I would call a grade three builder. They're a little bit better. Now, when I say grade three, grade four would be like maybe a semi-custom type of builder, and a grade five would be just a flat custom home builder. You could give them your architectural plan, they'll build to that specification on whatever lot you want. So we're not gonna talk about those custom builders in this video, though the tips are going to be very, very valuable for you folks too. Um, but we're going to talk basically the grade one, the grade two, and the grade three, because that's basically where 90% of the people are. So on the Cardells, 
they're on 65 foot lots and when you look out they're a little larger when you look at the roof that you could definitely tell a difference it's noticeably different from a Centex the Centex are going to be like this the Cardell roof pitch is going to be a lot higher and there's reasons and you'll see when when we get inside the home outside the architectural detail is going to be noticeably different from a Centex it's going to be obvious from a Morrison now when you walk in the front door you're going to notice right away rounded corners plant ledges um, ceilings that vault up to 14 feet you're going to see more upgraded countertops more upgraded cabinetry more upgraded tile and they're going to go a little beyond the specs of what you would normally get in say a base or a grade one or two home builder so it's really important to know the difference between these and i, I that's what this video is about so let me talk a little bit about tips so how can you spot that you go out a lot of times what happens when you get into some of these grade one builders the starter builders out there you'll notice that they have their architects their sales reps the, the actual builder of the home the superintendent they're basically a training ground for a lot of people so you probably walked into a home or maybe you have or haven't and let's say the home's 2,000 square feet and you walk in one home and you're like 2,000 square feet wow it seems a little tight it doesn't quite seem 2,000 square feet and then you'll go to another builder and you'll walk in their home and it's 2,000 square feet, and you're like, wow, this actually feels really good. It feels about like 2,200 square feet. The reason is because the space management, how they use the square footage is a lot better because their architects are better. Their contracts are generally better. A lot of times you get some of these real volume builders, the grade one builders, even a lot of the grade two builders out there, and some of the grade three builders, they're nickel and diming all their contractors to death, so they're not always getting the best quality inside the home. And some of the things you need to look at, and one of the things I would strongly recommend, no matter if you're buying a home from the very, very beginning, so where it's just dirt in your building, or even if you're going out and you're looking at homes and they're a fully completed home, Get the builder rep, or if you're with the realtor, go out with your real estate agent and walk through some homes ask questions it's really about education um, so what you want to look at you want to look at different things what the builders use an example when you go out are they using a grade one wood a grade two wood which most builders do or a grade three wood a grade three wood you don't want you could see these these are pieces of wood that they're using in the home where maybe they have a big knot in them or they're split or cracked and the reason why that's so important is if you get a home and it has grade three say a big knot in it and they put a wall right there well it's going to probably bow out maybe not immediate but keep in mind wood takes about seven years to fully die from the time it's cut down from the tree so you need to look for that go up and start looking in the attic this is all stuff before drywall before anything's done look in the attic and see the duct work that their contractor, their HVAC did. A lot of times I'll go out to some builders and I'll look and they did a really, really sloppy job. So you'll go out and you'll look and you'll see the ductwork has a 90 degree angle instead of a flowing ductwork. And that 90 degree angle not only constricts the air flow, and it's probably costing you, or it could be costing you about $10 a month, but it's putting a lot more pressure on your HVAC system and you're gonna be going through motors quicker. So there's things that you really need to look at. Um, look at, did, you know, how do they mount the cabinetry? How do they actually do stuff? And get what's behind the drywall and take a look at everything. Now I so, know sometimes this is overwhelming. A lot of times I get my buyers, and especially when they're doing a build job or if the drywall hasn't come, you know, hasn't been put up, we'll go out there and I'll start pointing things out to them. Hey, maybe you need to do this. Maybe the builder could do that. They need to maybe replace this wood. Start looking at all these things because this stuff is really what you tell the difference between a quality and a quantity builder. Example, a lot of builders in the attic you know for the um, insulation are they sticking r19 are they sticking r22 r30 r38 the higher the r number the better the value and the in the it's going to keep your utility bills down are they putting a radiant barrier up there which is really good to give you an example 
I live in a home and it's about 2,200 square feet and I have R30 in my attic. Most builders were putting in R19. The difference is about $50 a month on average difference just because of the quality my builder put in the home. So there's a lot of things you really need to look at and you really need to check out when buying. Now sometimes you get in, you're going through a brand new subdivision and you're not really sure of who the builder is, what their reputation is. Hopefully you're working with a real estate agent that really, really understands new construction because I'll tell you when you're looking at pre-owned as I've said before that's relatively easy the subdivisions already built um, it is still important even on the pre-owned market I always want to know who the builder is but even more so on new construction what's the reputation how do they handle problems how do they work what kind of quality do they put into the home so talk to your realtor about this another thing you may want to do especially if it's a newer um, subdivision is go out and ask the representative ask them different questions say okay well what's the insulation you put in the home and, and you know just start asking it a bunch of questions and even ask them say hey what's another subdivision in the area that you've built that's very similar to this go out and look at the subdivision start talking to the neighbors hey did you buy with so-and-so builder how was your experience what do you think what are your utility bills like compared to what you thought they would be like start asking a bunch of questions now of course take what they say with a grain of salt some people just wake up out of bed every day and they're in a fantastic mood and some people wake up out of bed every day and they're in a horrible mood so take what they say with a grain of salt but i'll tell you this People love talking about their kids and people love talking about their homes, whether they've had a good or bad experience. Even knocking some doors. I've had buyers that I've, I've suggested this and they've gone out and knocked on doors. It gives you a good sense of what's going on and what that builder's definitely like. Because the last thing you wanna do is you wanna buy a home and then you're with the builder that just isn't what you thought they were or who you thought they were. So there's definitely a lot to know. Keep in mind, when you're buying a home, you don't, and this goes for new and pre-owned, you don't make the money when you sell the home, you make the money when you buy the home. So that's why I'm doing this. I'm trying to educate you so you have these questions, you know who you're dealing with. There's a lot of great builders out there, but there's a lot of real, real shysters out there that I would stay away from. And moreover, again, you don't wanna go out and think you're getting a Toyota, and what you're really getting is a Kia. And it happens with a lot of people out there. So get an agent, and that's what I would really suggest. Go do all this stuff, or just get an agent who really knows what they're talking about and work with them. So I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. If you're looking for new construction in the Tampa Bay area, I would love to work with you, or just give me a call. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. And again, if you have any questions, you could give me a call. You could send me an email, write a comment. I look forward to helping you and talking to you. I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful day.